Okay, so first we're going to talk about function notation. We had an equation a minute ago, y equals negative x squared plus 4. Oh, you know, I was going to mention that very first example we had for this section was talking about those actors and actresses. The money was um, millions of dollars, how much they earned, the highest paying um, actors and actresses. Okay, not, I think it was 2018. Okay. Um, so we had this equation, function, uh, but now we're going to replace the y with function notation. So we're going to write it, we're going to say it's f of x, f of x, not f times x, f of x, equals negative x squared plus 4. So it's a different type of notation. Basically, you're replacing the dependent variable with f of x, doesn't have to be f. It could be g of x or h of x or, um, you know, they use different letters. f, g, and h are pretty common. Um, it's like giving the function a name. The independent variable, though, that's important. This is in terms of x, okay? So it's going to be how the variable you're using. You only get one variable, one independent variable. So what variable are you using? So you could have a function like g of k that might say k cubed minus 7. Okay, that would be a different function. So I have two examples of functions here. One in terms of x and the other in terms of k. Should have used a different letter. So for our purposes, a lot of times they're going to label the functions f of x, and a lot of times they're going to use x for the independent variable. Okay. Sometimes we want to be able to evaluate a function. So let's say we have f of x equals negative x squared plus 4. And let's say I want to evaluate the function at um, oh, negative 3. Okay? Then what I'm trying to find is f of negative 3. Okay? So f is the title of the function, it's the name of the function, and we're going to replace the independent variable with negative 3, okay? So, let's see. Um, we also say sometimes, usually we say f of negative 3, or f at negative 3, or f evaluated at negative 3, but that's what we're doing. Whatever you put in for the independent variable on the left, you have to put it for the independent variable on the right. So what I do is I write everything down on the right-hand side, but I replace the variable with negative 3 in this case. Now, why did I say negative 3? I could have picked any real number, but and it doesn't even have to be a real number. We'll see an example in the next video. But whatever I put in, on the left for the independent variable, I put in on the right for the independent variable, okay? All right, then in this case, we actually have to do the math, okay? So I get the opposite of nine plus four, which is gonna be negative five. So what that means is if I take my function that I have right here, and I wanna evaluate it at negative three, I get an output of negative five. Um, let's show this with the function machine. So a lot of books will use, they'll draw a picture of like a little machine. So I'll try to draw a picture of a little machine. <clears throat> My function says f of x equals negative x squared plus 4. And then we have this like input, we're dropping a number in, we're dropping negative 3 into the machine, and then we get something out. In our case we got negative 5. Okay. So when we did the work, we did f of negative 3, and we did all that work. It wasn't that much work, but a little bit of math. And we got negative 5 in the output, okay? So something goes in and something comes out. That means in this case, we have an ordered pair. There is a relation. We know that negative 3 maps to negative 5. So if I'm like looking for ordered pairs, that's what I'm talking about then. I can put a negative 3 into the function machine, and I get out a negative 5. That's the relationship. Here's my x, here's my y. The independent variable and the dependent variable. The input and the output. Okay, this is me saying lots of words, but trying to get the idea. This is a big idea. Once you get it, you know, it'll go get. All right, let's say we have something like 
um, g of y equals y minus 5. And let's say we want to find g of, I was going to try to draw an apple pie. Then I have to put in an apple pie on the other side. I'm not good at drawing apple pies. It looks more like a muffin now, but anyway. The thing is, whatever goes in on the left, that's what goes in on the right. And if you have more than one y, so let's say you had um, h of x equals x squared plus x, and you want to find h of 7, then you have to put in a 7 here and a 7 here. Okay? All right, so we'll see some examples of all of this in the next video. Oh, I didn't do the math. 49 and another 7, what's that, 56?